welcome to another edition of Nook News. I'm Beth Hadfield, the Activity Coordinator at the Center for Active Living and the host of this amazing show. Today I have with me Marcus Michalik, Site Coordinator at Cal, and Stan Carita, the Team Leader. Both of these fine gentlemen work in the kitchen at Cal and prepare some amazing food for lunch on a daily basis, Monday through Friday. We are going to talk about what they do, who they are, and how they do it all. Marcus, I think I'd like to start with you. Can you okay. tell us a little about your history of possibly working in the kitchen, how you ended up working at Cal? Okay, um, I've been in, uh, food service all my life. My family was in it. Oh, wow. And uh, at a very young age, um, I got into the restaurant business, went to a culinary school in Boston, Bunker Hill Community College wow. for a while, and then worked in my 20s for various uh, restaurants in Boston, in the South Shore. Uh, after that, I started, we had, I had a family, and uh, I decided to go into management, food service management, so I got a, uh, I got certified for that at Stonehill College and uh, worked uh, various uh, management jobs in nursing homes. And then finally I got a, uh, a management job at Shriners Burns Hospital right. for Children in Boston and I worked there for 26 years. Wow. So I uh, retired in 2014 and uh, I'm not the type that can sit still. So uh, I uh, uh, got a part-time job uh, working in, uh, at the hospital here in Plymouth for a little while, and then I got a job at Laurel Wood working as a part-time chef. And the hours were just uh, not exactly what I wanted, so I, was, I saw this job came up in last March, and uh, so that was for me, and I'm a lot here, right? And you have been an integral part of our family ever since. Oh, thank you very awesome. much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Stan, can you give okay. us a little about you? Sure. Um, I got into the restaurant business in the early 70s. And I went, worked my way up the ranks through dishwasher and salads and everything else. And then one day, um, they needed somebody behind the line. The, the chef threw me behind the line. And I learned from old school cooks. And from there, I stayed there for a few years, became a chef at an Irish restaurant, then I went to a hotel, then I went to a Greek restaurant, and various other restaurants in between. And um, again, I, like Marcus, I retired in 2012. Can't sit around, it was just awful. So I went working for the school department, and then the job to take over the, the cook's department, um, team leader job at the Council, it's Keep going. Council of Aging. It's not the Council of Aging anymore, but um, Active Living. Council of Active Living. <laughs> and so I took that job, and I've been there probably about five years now. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Yeah. And you also, integral part of our team, we, <laughs> you have watched, you've watched it all because. Yeah we're here to talk about the meals, but we've experienced when the numbers were low and now we're doing we're, much better oh yeah. and the meals are so much more pleasing and appealing and really everybody's getting what they need. I think the background that me and Marcus have in somewhat a similar besides he went to college for it, um, but he was in that industry all his life. All his life. W w along with me, we just clicked when Marcus came to work for us, and um, yeah, we, we hit, yeah. hit it right on yeah. together, and uh, and we both from that same school, you know, and it's just intuitive, sort and, of. And I break. think yeah. Yeah. how important that is because really, our kitchen is big, but our kitchen is small. When you're working side by side, trying to prepare all the food that we need to prepare, and you know, some days it's very extensive. Um, preparations like today when we were feeding 60 people for lunch today about yeah. so there's a lot more than goes into a day that maybe we're only right. have 30 we pretty people much only right. have like two, 
two hours. Yeah, right. we have to, two to, hours to put it all together. To get it all going. So let's jump right into it. So I'm going to start with what do you think sets our lunches apart from maybe other places? And either one of you, feel free to jump in and. You get two experienced cooks. Yes. Um, both have been in the, from the ranks up and managed kitchens. So we, both of us know what we're doing. And I think, and I, you can tell me, is because of we learned old school, we can take anything that's in that refrigerator and make a meal for a bunch of people. Right. I think there was, wasn't there a show on a, your, your, uh, one of those food shows basically had some experienced cooks and they would give you certain ingredients and they come up with something yep. and we can do that. Yeah. You, know, you absolutely can. I, I've watched it happen uh, many days and I think it's absolutely amazing. And, and we get compliments. You know, I, I can't always say we got compliments on our meals Before, prior yeah. to. Um, maybe not prior, prior to both of you coming, you know, prior to both of you working together, the compliments are even bigger now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, so it I mean, is. With that experience that we have, I think we're able to enhance the, uh, the food that the, the school sends over. With Plymouth North provides us yeah. with the basics right. and, and then we take it a step further. A step further. Okay, yeah. so that's what does it mean taking it a step further? So what, what love are you putting in to that? I guess, I, I really want to know. I really wanted to ask that well, question. Well, it's really, you know, it's, uh, you know, you can get basic recipes. There's a lot of uh, in institutional recipes and, and they're okay. But somebody like Stan or myself will taste it and go, well, you know what, it's good, but it needs a little of this. Yeah. It needs a little of that. And, yeah. I, and I'll even yeah. say to Sam, what do you think? And, yeah. and, and, and vice versa, we'll do that to each other. And then and, and just build on that and uh, just like a step further. You know, so so yeah. when I say you put love into those recipes, I'm, I'm not kidding. No, like no. it's, well, it's yeah. truly a passion for both of you. Your um, history is are literally all cooking right up through the right, ranks. Yeah. You from the time you were very young and you as, as an adult, but I, I get the impression you always like to cook. Oh yeah, oh. I, yeah. Uh, um, my grandfather was a baker. Wow. So, there you go. See, yeah. things we never know, <laughs> even in common conversation. <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah, we, we, also, we want to make it enjoyable for yeah. the people that are coming in there. And, and so we know that it has to be tasty. It has to look good, yeah. uh, right? The mm -hmm. eye appeal of the plate. We take all that into consideration. And um, some of these people, it's the only meal that yes. they eat all day long. That's um, right. So it has to be good. Right. You're right. Yeah. And plentiful, yeah. which we... Uh, plentiful is never an issue. <laughs> right having a prior discussion before we started the show. Plentiful is never an issue. Um, but just because you touched upon it, yes, for some meal, that's the only, for some people, that's the only meal they're having with other people around. Yeah. Most of, I would say a majority of our patrons that come for lunch um, live alone. Not all, most. Um, and we know it can be extremely quiet um, if you're eating alone. And you're right, you want it to be appealing. You want them to be excited about coming in for, for lunch. And, right. and I think the banter in the kitchen helps a little bit too. There's a smile on everyone's face in the kitchen. You're happy to see them. And after doing it for a while, you know people by name. Yeah. It's not just, right. hey, okay, here's your plate, see you later. I, I think the people, the, the patrons that we have, they feel that energy that's in there yeah. between, between Stan yeah. and myself and our unbelievable volunteers. At 100%. The volunteers are yeah. amazing. Right. And and we couldn't do what we do in that kitchen without, without them, volunteers. No. Yeah. Because like Marcus said, we only have two hours right. to do this. And even as good as we are, we still need that extra help. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so 
If somebody wanted to make a recommendation for a meal, like, are people allowed to say, hey, is there any way that we could have this for lunch someday? Well, they is have that in a the possibility? They well, they let yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, they may, <laughs> may have let us know. We, we had a little bit too much pasta yeah. lately. Can you please oh, okay. s switch it up? Right. Yeah. We do. Um, that's why, like today, was supposed to be a pasta day, but we ended up with meatloaf. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so people have to register for lunch. We, we would like people to register for lunch. Yes, right. Do either one of you want to explain the registration process or? Stan's well, more familiar with it than I am, so. Usually what, what happens is the Friday prior to the week coming up, we, we need the numbers to give to the school so they can buy the food that we need. Okay. And uh, we do have standbys during the, during the week, but if they can call, register their name, and come in because if they don't come in, then it costs. It the, does cost the, the town the money. Town money. Right. So, <clears throat> if they call, they register, come in on on the following week for those meals. It's easy as that. It's easy. So, um, you'll be able to call the Center for Active Living um, at the phone number on the screen. It's five zero eight eight three zero four two three zero. If you find um, uh, a, a lunch that you would really like to have, call the center, register, you're all set to go, show up. Um, the meals are $3, um, and it, it's, it's... It's a fantastic deal there. Uh, when I first started in March, I was, uh, well, we have Bingo Day, which is every Tuesday, which always gets a given amount of people for you. 40 to 50, even more yeah. than that we've had. But I couldn't get over certain days. I said, where are all the people? I, you know, it's just because we have such a fantastic deal here for $3, right. you get You, you get, get everything. everything you need. Yeah. You get everything. And uh, I think the word is finally getting out. Yeah, because our numbers have, have increased. Have definitely well, increased. Well, I think yeah. the word is getting out that the gentlemen in the kitchen really know what they're doing, and the meals are spectacular. I mean. You know, I didn't want to say that, but that was. <laughs> but but I think you can <laughs> pat yourself on the back because I think it truly is the two of you are what's bringing people in for lunch. There's kindness, there's camaraderie, there's conversation. You know, the patrons enjoy seeing you with a smile on your face, enjoying what you do, but they're really enjoying their meal too, it, and it's you know it all kind of goes together. Um, and sometimes we surprise them because we'll make a homemade soup. Oh, yeah, they, we've and been they, doing that yeah, a lot lately. Yeah, and they, especially and in the cold that. weather. Yeah. It's not on the menu, but we add it to the menu. Yeah. So and they, get a, they get a surprise, yeah. so, and which is good. Which is really nice because yeah. who doesn't like surprises? Right. And surprises and food, I don't know, I just think they should go hand in hand. So um, we do have volunteers in the kitchen. And Marcus, you touched upon that. Um, we could not do what we do without our volunteers. Could you explain a little bit about what volunteers do? Because we're going to ask that if people in the community want to volunteer their time at the center, you know, we would love to have more volunteers in the kitchen. So can you explain a little bit about what they would be doing? Well, it's pretty much uh, doing all the uh, uh, the, the uh, sides that we uh, prep, supply, prep, right? prep, prepping this. like rolls yeah. and butter, putting it together, uh, desserts, portioning it out, and uh, all that type of thing. And, that, and that's they don't have to do any actual cooking or anything like that, but they just help with the prep. Yeah. Okay, so prep could be slicing the vegetables that are going in the salad not just dishing out dessert and putting it in separate dessert cups. Am I right? Or no, does everything come pre-cut? 
We no, we, no. mostly oh, you guys do the cutting, yeah. so they would just be setting up. It would depend each. on yeah. their experience. If yeah. somebody came in and they had a, a lot of experience in culinary, we would got it. Yeah, let, let them go for it. But, you know, but you know. not so, because the knives are sharp. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I agree one hundred percent. They are, and we keep them sharp just for the reasons that we need them that way. But okay. it's very important. Yeah. All that other little stuff is yeah. it's very time consuming and having. It volunteers. allows us to do all the other yeah. things. All the other good stuff. To put the love into yeah. the main part of the meal. Right. And then we do, we do need help at the end of the service and all to, to help put the dishes through the dish machine and. And then and, get everything put away yeah. and, and, and ready thing, yeah. for the next right. day. Right. And help serve it. Yeah. And you know, plate in the plate in the meal and serving it to the people. So this is our pitch. Um, if you would like to volunteer at the. Cal and help out in the kitchen. We are looking for a float pool of people. So that's a group of people that are willing to come in on short notice um, to maybe fill in for someone who is vacationing or possibly ill um, so that we can still have a full um, course of people in the kitchen to be able to serve the meal so that the two of you aren't running around crazy. Um, in order to do that, we need people to step up and volunteer. Um, Ginny Healy is our volunteer coordinator and she will meet with you, but I went into the kitchen and we, we had a discussion with the volunteers in the kitchen this morning and one of the volunteers, Rosemary, said it would really be better if people came in and actually saw what we do. On paper, it might look, I don't want to say easier, but I think everything looks different on right. paper, yeah. but when you're physically standing in the kitchen, right. it may doing, not be for everybody. But yeah. Right, and, so, and, and we know that. Yeah. So if if anything that we've talked about does um, you know interest you in any way, please give us a call and and come to the center. Um, we can give you the opportunity to over you know just kind of watch what goes on and see if if volunteering at at the Cal it, is for you. And if the kitchen isn't for you, we do have a list of many other jobs that, you know, are open at the time and, you know. But we, we do have a lot of fun in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah you do yeah, have a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, There's a lot of laughter yeah. oh, yeah. coming out of there. Oh, yeah. So, and, but isn't that, isn't that the best part of the job? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, is, yeah. there's yeah. the... The mechanics of cooking, but the camaraderie of the people makes the job. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to add or talk about that, huh? you know, pertain to? Well, they get, we just want people to give us a shot, come in. Uh, you would be so surprised. I was, uh, we have the, probably the best Reuben in Plymouth. And if that I'd, comes, say, I'd say the South Shore. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. You know, so, I have to agree because I never ever had one, and Stan made me one one day, and I was like floored. It absolutely was delicious. I had never had a Reuben for it, not a day in my life. And, and I think the last time we had a Reuben, we we came up with the uh, a chicken soup that we. Did. No, no, we came up with a Reuben pizza. Oh, we did that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that great? We are. You guys are. You don't have carte blanche to be creative, but in a way you do. You know, we do. Is is it usually Pizza Friday or is it Pizza every Now? Other, every other. other yeah. Every other. So every other Friday we have pizza at the Cal and um, the assortment of pizzas that you guys make yeah, are yeah. incredible. Yeah, we've had tomato yeah. and feta. We've had Reuben pizzas. Right. We've had onion and pepper, um, pepperoni, cheese. Pine, uh, Hawaiian, yeah. uh, I, you can keep going on you and on. Right? Yeah. You actually but, got a picture of them one time, didn't you? Yeah. There was about eight or nine <laughs> yeah. of them there. <laughs> but, you know, let's be honest. Food is really important. Without food, there is no life. Right. Like, it, they do go hand in hand. Um, the bottom line in all this is exactly what you said. Meal is $3. Where can you go have a full, balanced meal? Your meat, your starch, your vegetable. Do we always have fruit, or is that optional? Always have fruit. Fruit? Or pudding. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
a majority of the time you have a salad. Yep. Yeah. Um, soup is on the menu for some meals, but sometimes it's an added attraction. Right. Yep. We have milk, and that all comes with your $3 purchase. And then we do have, is it club soda? Or spark, I don't um, uh, um, Seltzer. Seltzer water, flavored seltzer water right. um, for an extra dollar. dollar. So if you didn't want milk or you wanted milk and you wanted flavored seltzer, it's $4. Right. Like, there is, I do not believe no. I would challenge any of the restaurants in town who could give you a meal for $4, totally mm. balanced, have good laughs, come and eat with great people. And you don't have to eat for the rest of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that does go back to what we were talking about. People that are living alone, if they come to the center, that's their main meal. Yep, right. So necessarily, what would they eat after? My grandmother, I love what I do working at Cal because my, my best friend, my mentor was my grandmother. She actually worked in the kitchen in every COA that she worked in. So she moved around to different houses, worked in a kitchen in every one of those places. And she would make me laugh because I would say to her, Graham, did you do any of the activities? No, I help with lunch, I have lunch, I do my own thing. Yeah. Which, no different than a lot of people we hear in yeah. town. But that was her main meal. And by the time she went home and it was time for dinner, it was a cup of tea and a bowl of right. cottage cheese or right. something, or, something. Yeah. or a bowl yeah. of cereal. Yeah. Something simple because you already did have your big meal. Your big right. meal. Yeah. Is there a name for the big meal? Like, some people call it dinner, some people call it supper. Even though it's right. our lunch, right. Marcus is like, Beth, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> no, I know, like, no, they, they all, uh, when I worked in nursing homes, it was the same way because a lot of the, the yeah. lunches were the big served meal. at 11.30, yeah. 12 o'clock, right. and I would call it dinner. Yeah. You know, and some people would call it supper. And, and supper, like, It's yeah. food. <laughs> come, <on. laughs> come eat, come hungry, come ready. You, right. Sometimes we even make homemade dressings. Yes. For the Rubens, they, we make that dressing there. It's not store-bought. Hmm. Well, there's a lot that's not yeah. store-bought. Right. 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 We're doing our own slicing, too. Yeah, we're doing yeah. our slicing now. So, what's your favorite part of what you're doing at the Cal? Like, I love my job. I love the whole aspect of it. I love running around crazy, organizing it all. That's me. What do you love about what you do? I love to cook anyways. So I would say that would be one part of it, but I love the people. And when somebody's missing after a couple of days, you start questioning, hey, anybody check on this guy or lady? Or are they okay? And when they, so when you miss that, it, it, it takes a little bit of my heart sometimes. Absolutely. I mean, and I'm sort exactly of the same way with cooking. I mean, I love cooking, and yeah. uh, I'm semi-retired. I'm supposed to be retired, but I can't do that, you know. And so this is a passion for me yeah. to do that. And, and, and working with these people, it goes hand in hand, just you know, being able to do something you really like and, and uh, you know, helping people. Helping people. With that. So I guess I'm listening to both of you. I'm, I'm nowhere near retirement age, not yet anyway. It'll happen sometime, oh, but I don't, don't, don't rush it. Don't rush I'm it. not, <laughs> but I hear what both of you are saying that um, even though you're retired, doing doing nothing is not on your daily schedule. Yeah, no. And um, you know, I, I can't thank you both enough for coming out of retirement and. Uh, <laughs> Joining the ranks of, of the Cal staff. It is, it is a fantastic place to be, though, yeah, to work it there. It really is. So, you know, it's not. Yes, the staff is And everybody great. In, yeah. the, in, in the, the whole center theaters. there is it's great. 
Incredible, incredible. Gentlemen, our time is up for today, and I cannot thank you both for, for joining me today. This was an incredible show, and I hope that the people watching take away that they're gonna call the Cal maybe tomorrow or the next day and say, I'd like to come for lunch and meet Stan and Marcus. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? If you have watched our show and you are coming in for the first time, please come up to Stan and Marcus, introduce them, introduce yourself to them, and believe me, they will welcome you with open arms. Once again, another edition of Nook News with Marcus and Stan. Thank you so very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.